putting a watch up there so I'll make sure I don't run over. But anyway, I am you know, more delighted to be here than you could possibly imagine uh, for, for any number of reasons. Uh, not the least of which is Harlan Boyles, to have the honor to speak at a lecture series named for him. Uh, as Edward knows, I uh, didn't know his father well, but I met him several times and knew him. And uh, Edward, I will never forget, uh, I saw him in several venues, but the first time I met him was in his office at Raleigh. And I don't know how to say this any other way than to tell you that when I walked in that office the first time, I truly, you just know sometimes, I knew I was in the presence of a great man. Uh, Holland Boyles was a great man, so I'm thrilled to be here and be a part of that. Uh, secondly, just through great good fortune, I've had a friendship with your chancellor for uh, a pretty good number of years now, 12 or 13 years, I guess. And uh, so to be on uh, campus with him and be a part of anything uh, that he is leading is, is a privilege for me. Uh, third, and it's good for I want the students to hear this, uh, in the two major parts of my career, which were investment banking and brokerage firm, Interstate Johnson Lane, and now with Krispy Kreme, uh, App State graduates have played an incredible role in my life. And in fact, I would tell you that doing interview processes, when I have anything to do with it, if an App State diploma is in the, is in the group, and that resume rises uh, simply for that one fact. Uh, there are a couple of people here. Uh, I don't know whether Kay Norwood's still here, but Kay Norwood was uh, the research director at Interstate Johnson Lane. More importantly, she was and is a close friend, and you never know this from her, but she was also clearly considered uh, not only the best research director with any regional firm, but the greatest textile analyst in the world. Uh, and she's an App State graduate. Uh, I have a, a number of good associates at Krispy Kreme now that graduated App State. One of them is here, Brad Wall. I'm not sure where Brad is, but uh, Krispy Kreme, uh, my conviction that Krispy Kreme is heading the right direction would be dampened greatly if it weren't for Brad and the role he plays. He runs several of our most important businesses, and uh, he is a credit to your university. He got his graduate degree through App State. So uh, a number of reasons that I'm just thrilled to be here. I want to give uh, three quick apologies as I preface, and then we'll get going. Uh, apology number one is uh, I am going to speak primarily to the students. Uh, I hope that for those of you that are not students, that there be something appropriate here, that there be something for you to take back, but my real focus is gonna be on the students. Uh, secondly, uh, I, I just wanna make sure you understand, and I'll apologize in advance, because I, I certainly never would wanna be offensive, but whether I try to not, so much of what I believe and so much of what I'll say uh, will be colored by, uh, deeply uh, colored by my, by my faith, which is the central part of my life, so you just need to understand that as a backdrop. And third, and this may be most important, I'm going to have to look at my notes a couple of times. Normally I don't know what I'm going to say and I come up, I'm kind of ready, but as my wife would tell you, uh, for some reason on the last couple of days, I just felt like I was not heading the right direction with these comments. And so I have changed dramatically in the last 24 hours. There were a few things that I put on a couple pieces of paper that I don't want to forget. So those are my apologies. We'll, uh, we'll move forward and see how we do. I do want to say one other thing for the uh, for the group that is here from China that apparently got in at 2 o'clock this morning, uh, it should be about now, I think 2.30, there'll be some pillows coming through the door. And, uh, but in all honesty, uh, there would be nothing personal taken by me if any and all of you fall asleep. Uh, I understand you got here at 2 a.m., which means 2 p.m. is about 2 a.m. your time. Uh, so we fully understand, but, but what a great blessing to us to have there. And as you may, I may tell you later, uh, Krispy Kreme is coming to China uh, this year. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, I do need to read one thing to you. Uh, Dean Edwards and I were, were, were talking, and he said one of the great things about being here uh, at App State Students is just all the outdoor activities that y'all get to participate in. You know, uh, skiing in the winter, hiking in the, uh, in, the, in the better months. And he even mentioned to me that uh, a lot of you uh, continue that hiking uh, love and passion by going out west sometimes. You hike in Colorado, Wyoming, Montana when you can, and it's just a big part of some of your lives. Well, what happened was last night I was messing around on the interstate and uh, happened to come across a bulletin that I felt I should read to you just to, just to kind of give you a heads up in case you're heading that direction. So let me read this real quick and then I'll go on with my comments. Uh, this is, comes from the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, and they're advising uh, American hikers to take extra precautions against bears 
while hiking in Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana National Forest. They are advising hikers to wear noise-producing devices, such as little bells, on their clothing to alert but not startle the bears unexpectedly. They also advise you to carry pepper spray in case of an encounter with a bear. It is also a very good idea to look for signs of bear activity. For example, hikers should be able to recognize the difference between black bear and grizzly bear droppings on the golf, excuse me, on the, on the golf courses and the hiking trails. Uh, is that okay to talk about droppings in this stuff? Yeah, I, I don't know. Droppings is the best word I could come up with, but anyway, apparently black bear droppings are smaller, contain berries, and possibly some squirrel fur. Grizzly bear droppings have bells in them and smell like pepper spray. So why did I start off with that? I started off with that because so many of us are now in a world, and so many of you are going into a world that is just chock full of grizzly bears, different shapes, you know, different risk. But we all have our grizzlies out there. And I really can't tell you how much uh, I, I would have come just to hear Jeff Kane's comments. And I can't tell you how much I think his thoughts and his comments are going to help you be prepared for that world, and for those of us that are in it, to take a deeper breath and be a little calmer in that world. So my hope and prayer is that, uh, that somehow, somewhere, whether it be now or years from now, something I will say to you today will uh, help you be better prepared to face those grizzlies along the trail. The title of the talk that I chose for today is Pursuing a Passion While Writing an Epitaph. And I know that if you even looked at that title, some of you might wonder, well, I don't understand the connection. As a matter of fact, not even sure I know what he's talking about. So let me tell you how they connect, and uh, let me tell you why I worded the title that way. Uh, and first, I'll, I'll address passion. Uh, what, is, what does having passion have to do with pursuing a successful career? And I'll give you my answer. In my opinion, if you pursue a career about which you have no passion, you are either pursuing someone else's dream or you are pursuing someone else's dream for you.